Mini Matters, a miniature and painting podcast. <laughs> right. Thank you, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Jamie Hutber meets two people lying on. No, I'm joking. Um, welcome back. And uh, a little shout out. If anybody knows of Venom Night Model 75mm that they want to sell to a now, he would be eternally grateful for you. But he that's wouldn't re- give you anything reason- other than money. Yeah. At a reasonable price as well. Of course. Uh, yeah, exactly. Non eBay prices. So I, I might not have missed. I cannot afford. <laughs> See? And, you know, also you give back to us with. Hold on, links it. Colossus painted in models. So if you want to see, oh wait, it's the wrong side. If you want to see, uh, you know, Venom painted, you know what you've got to do. Um, so, <laughs> I feel like, what is the point here? We're talking about this guy. Okay, I think... I think Thanks, Lionel. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll save you. <laughs> um, I think you've alluded to the fact that this is the first night model you painted for your, for, for your personal collection. Mm-hmm. Um how much did this push you, bearing in mind it was the first one that you did? Uh, it was the first one of Night Models and my, I, I don't think, my third 75 mil ever. Uh, I didn't paint, sorry? Wait, well, like, how long ago did you paint this? In 2015. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it was my favorite of the range because the box art is outstanding. And, and it was one of the figures that really um, put me into painting figures and and i loved him so much that the figure that i i was waiting what you were saying in the last episode about waiting for the right time i was yeah. waiting for the right time and uh and at one point i i thought uh i would paint another one if i have to in i don't know five years or ten years i don't know but i want to paint him now Maybe in in I don't know in a time I would I would not want to paint so I I have to work with the with the hype uh, don't waste the hype it's uh, probably my <laughs> a catchphrase that uh, I should say for myself um, but yeah doing uh, throwing myself to to the challenge. Uh, made me paint something way better than my actual level. Okay. Uh, this is not my level at, the, at that point in my life. I was not painting like this. But in this case, I put so much effort and and study and and care that I I level up, but not one, maybe five, uh, right. just just because doing something um, that it pushed me pushed me a lot and i have a lot of love for him <laughs> and uh, you, it, it, even yeah let's say even the only way you can ever push yourself at that is with a model that just gives you that burning desire like because mm-hmm. you would never sacrifice so much of your time if exactly. you didn't care um and like I think that's what I had with the elder model, Lionel, basically. is like I didn't mind putting in like four months because I loved the model mm-hmm. so much. And it was one that I'd wanted to paint since I was like, I don't know, 16. And then and it's, it's, it's still your best piece, in my opinion. In my yeah, because I haven't given a shit about anything else that I've ever painted. <laughs> like, it's the... It, 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 I, honestly, I can't recreate that feeling of, of the intense mm-hmm. wanting to paint that I've had. And... Uh, like the level up concept. I mean, it's mental because you said you didn't start painting properly until five years ago, but I guess this was the moment that made you realize uh, no, like. Yeah, well, I, I consider this my my start in, in, the, in the world of painting figures that when people maybe heard my name for the first time, even though okay. my name, I don't know if now uh, is heard a lot, but uh, in that moment, I was absolutely nobody. I was a, a, an amateur, and and I was until maybe a year ago or two years ago. Not not an amateur, but not well known. I, I was mm. completely uh, doing my thing, and, and that's it. Um, but this piece, I felt like people started to notice me, uh, 
-hmm. not not that I want it, but I feel it. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, in an earlier episode, you've alluded to the fact that you would never sell this piece. There's no, no there's no monetary way. value. Now that you've told us that story, I can understand why this piece is so important to you. So you see this as the beginning of the the Arnau pro painter or professional painter that we know. The, now. There's also the 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 story that. I moved to England. I was okay. living in Barcelona, and I I moved to to here to Kingston uh, with my well now is my wife, my girlfriend at that, in that moment. Mm -hmm. And I remember painting him in the in the living room of a rented house, uh, sharing with with her family, and it was it's a special because it, I felt for the first time. I moved in another country, living for myself, painting that um, I had to work a lot to to earn something to to it, and and for that reason it's more special, I think, because it was uh, the beginning of my uh, adventure of living outside, and it was also the reason that I became uh, I don't know if a good painter, but a painter professional. Uh, I'd say good. Just if you, yeah, if you're fishing there, I'll buy. It. Um, it, it's living on my own in a country that it's way more expensive than than Spain. Uh, it made me the painter that I am. Um, coming here in to England, and did that piece was the very beginning of me being here. I think for me, I, I, and I don't know whether it's worth talking about the process or whether you you can remember, but for me, what's particularly eye-catching on this piece is the yellow. Obviously, yellow is notoriously hard to work with, um, oranges and yellows, mm -hmm. and how how you got it so vibrant and almost, it's almost like non-metallic metal, even though um, I, I don't think it is on that character, is it? it's meant to be yellow, but it's so vibrant. Um, did that take a lot of work? Did that take a lot of experimentation to get to, 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 get to that? Mm, not really. It's... Uh, always in these cases, it's uh, having a white base coat because okay. if, if not, you cannot achieve uh, proper saturation of the color. But mm -hmm. that's that's a um, uh, basic rule of painting saturated. And in these cases, uh, layering in with things with very vibrant inks. Uh, in this case, scale seventy five intensity. Okay. Uh, in both red and yellow. Powerful. I, I have a fundamental problem with undercoating in white. Um, I've done it now twice, and I swore on my on my life I'd never do it again. I don't understand you. Oh, don't give me the screw face, right? It's it's. I find it super annoying because you undercoat in white, and then like so. I don't know if I can pause this. Like you see on all the black bits, unless mm -hmm. you cover it perfectly, you always get these white little crappy specks come up. Yeah. Does that annoy you? Well, two things about that. Uh, first, I, I don't base coat in white. I base coat in black, and then in the parts that I have to work on a saturated color, I put uh, yeah, white. A yeah, brush or yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, even if it's a, if it's a brush stroke, it's okay. Just to have a, a small surface to work with. And the other thing is that uh, it's really common. In at the beginning, mostly to leave unpainted spaces uh, in the blacks in with a black primer uh, and use these unpainted surfaces like uh, outlining or or to define some things, but just avoiding the to paint this black surface. I don't know if you know what I mean. For example, you do you want to? Well, it, it, it sounds like you're saying in, in terms of like a, an, an edge shadow, an edge, an edge separator by leaving that black there. Is that what you're saying? For example, yeah. If you have in, in the, the Colossus, for example, the lines that separate the the plaques of the, of the legs, mm -hmm. the, these lines, horizontal lines, yep. uh, it's easy to think to leave them unpainted and, and the black in the, and the base coat and the primer will be there and we'll make okay. the, the yeah, line okay. right? the separation yeah but that's that's one of the biggest mistakes uh, when caring uh, about definition 
because when you do this, the line will not be straight because you are doing brush strokes in both sides of the line. So the brush strokes will be um, messy or, or or not, but even though it won't be uh, a straight, really defined line. So if you are doing the, the leg, you paint the entire leg and then you do the line with a brush and you will do a way more straight line and, and perfect and finely detailed line that if you leave that part unpainted. Yeah, yeah, so it forces you basically if you do do, I don't know, either like a, a an airbrush to, to line out where you want to paint or not, it, it forces you not to be lazy basically. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah, I get you now. Um, I think that was the point. Yeah, I, 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 I wonder if I do that. I'm pretty sure with my elder that I painted. Also, it's really annoying that I'm blurry. But the elder I painted, I, um, I'm pretty sure all the black parts are just the under undercoat because mm -hmm. I couldn't be bothered to. I mean, it didn't really matter the tabletop, but still, supreme laziness. Um, so I wrote some questions because I knew I'd forget if I didn't. But it, this, which is unlike me, but that's how much I care. Um, did anybody help you with critique or feedback when you did this? Uh, I don't think so. No. It's tough. It's a tough world out there by yourself. And to produce something <laughs> like this, man, that's damn uh, impressive. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean that I couldn't find it because I had uh, Mark Masklans has always been my main yeah. source of inspiration or reference. Uh, I don't like though to to I don't like to look at other people's work. In obviously in this case I looked at Alfonso's uh, work, but uh, most of it I don't like to change things on a miniature based on other people' critics. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer to take that critics and apply them to the next one because yeah, I, see. I feel like if I change things that I made wrong in a figure. Uh, based on others' opinions, uh, two things will happen. One is that we'll lose my my own vision of, for that figure, even though it's if it's wrong. Uh, mm. It's my figure, and I did it. Uh, I did everything, a hundred percent of it. My way, yeah. And mm. and yeah, and I own my my mistakes and whatever. And the other, uh, I lost my train of thought. I mean that that was enough for me already. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, like basically, you were. You, I asked you, yeah, who helped? Uh, and Mark Maskelands, and you wanted to keep your own style because otherwise, you. Um... Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and having uh, another reference will always um, influence you, and do things. Maybe, obviously, take mistakes that the other makes, and that's something that you should avoid. When having a reference, always try to pick the best of the best to not carry mm. with the same mistakes they do, mm. uh, because always we always do mistakes. And then um, it's, it's um, having a reference may be uh, easy or, or um, kind of um, more straightforward when you paint, but then it's less yours. And mm -hmm. you learn less, you mm -hmm. you make less effort to uh, do some volumetry study mm -hmm. and and light thinking and you know you think, learn less. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I don't know why, but it's it's like a it it it's like a mind blown moment a little bit because um, especially where I've been like I've painted a lot less the last six months now than I have before, but still i i always is that there's always this doubt right so i always need constant questioning from other people and in a way it stifles me a little bit more because i'm always waiting for the next feedback or i'm you know waiting till something clicks from someone telling me something right so i think i don't know if i'll ever be able to do this but instantly when you said that i had the idea that actually a really good way to paint would be um, especially with people's help when I, you know, I, I show them a model and say, what would I change would be don't show anybody the model, finish the model relatively quickly. Cause then I don't play it over and over in my head, questioning, questioning, and then show the photo to people and be like, what's wrong with it? 
Um, it's quite a self. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but I don't yeah. even know if there is a word. But uh, yeah, it, I understand what you mean, and I and I think it's the best to to take the criticism once the figure is is already finished, and and understand why this criticism is coming, and apply them and apply the the solution to the next ones, and not make the, that mistakes again. And and the other thing that I remembered is um, when you got a criticism, you are getting it um, respect the idea they have in mind of your figure, not your idea. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. if I uh, criticize a figure of, I don't know, Mark Masklans, for example, we have uh, different styles, I will criticize him in, the, in my style. I will make mm -hmm. maybe put more color or maybe mm -hmm. uh, put more focus, light focus on some places and because it's what I understand about painting. It's not what he yeah. understands. So criticism is is a double-edged sword because it may be right, but um, it may it may not be. It yeah, may not be what you are looking for yeah. in, in this figure. On, it's um, it's one thing that I I do quite a lot as well as I, I rarely show whips, um, particularly on social media. I never show whips. The reason being is, um, as you said, people will then start piping in or they have an idea. And then you can t you sometimes adopt that idea and you lose track of the way you want it to go. And I think I'm coming around to the idea of even if it's wrong and it's a mistake, I kind of want to own it because it's mm -hmm. my mistake mm -hmm. and I'm on my journey and I'll learn from that. And I've done a couple of pieces um where I didn't, I didn't get the feedback to Alfonso or anybody. I kind of did it myself. I enjoyed the pieces, and ironically, once I did show them to friends afterwards, they were like, "Wow, you've that. That's really good." Mm -hmm. um, Jamie will know two of the pieces: is is the Batman and the the Thanos. I did, and I did them by myself, and then showed the final pieces. Um, and I think had I shown the whips beforehand, I think people would have said certain things that might have influenced, and I, I think would have affected the final outcome to to my mm. detriment. Yeah, and the fun though I think think like thinking yeah. about it now like the uh, like, like I, I did it with my dragon so much so that I just don't want to paint it anymore mm -hmm. like he's basically I almost tempted to throw him away which is silly because I could probably sell him strip him down but like yeah I think it's a lot more fun when you just maybe not a lot more fun maybe it's the state of mind you're in at that time at least for me sometimes I, I like showing people models because it starts conversation and then mm -hmm. I can just chat to people but Generally, yeah, I think I think it's a it's an interesting concept you've uh, bestowed on me, you two. No, um, one, one thing that I did want to ask is obviously now that that model is five years old, and you said you leveled up, uh, you know, uh, five, I think you said five times from doing that model. <laughs> now with the experience, well, we'll, we'll say <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now with the experience that you've got, having mm -hmm. painted for, for for another five years. What would you change anything with that model if you could do it again? Yeah, definitely I okay. would, but uh, I have it uh, on the side of Black Cat and Colossus uh, on, and Thor, and I don't feel it. It's I don't feel it badly. I don't. I have the same appreciation for him, mm. even though it's not at the same level. It doesn't scream. Uh, I'm not. That well, I, I I feel it that that's in in shape, still for the. This holds up the, well. This model. Like. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it it's it has a lot of dust on it, and the colors are maybe <laughs> not uh, so bright. But um, I'm I'm pretty happy with it and how it's holding up. Okay, let it's, me put, let me push yeah. you on it though. If you if you could change it again, let's say you could wave a wand. And you could change it again with the skill that you have now. What what would you change? What what what's the most obvious first change you'd make? The non-metallic. Uh, okay. Even though I I was really happy and it was um, the the most uh, attention that it had the figure was because of the non-metallic. Um, but there's a lot more room to improve, and and it's kind of basic. There's maybe, of course, <laughs> now that it's painted and you see it, it's uh, it's okay now. But 
if you see it um, side to side with Thor, I think yeah. you can find a lot more nuances and things and, and care sort of, in Thor. Sort of tempted to do that now, but I, I won't I won't put them side by side. I'll do it in post. Ah, but then that defeats the whole point of it. I didn't want I, to do I it. I don't mind. I, I'm, okay, I'm very okay. happy and I'm, I'm proud of, of being able to... Add, at the very beginning, uh, put myself into into it and bring this piece mm. that I was not capi- capi- capable of of doing at all. I thought mm. so, at least. It kind of leads me into Lionel. Are you tempted now to tackle your night models? I am. Once I've once I finish my current projects, um, mm. I I, th- I think I am because I'm I'm really enjoying. Everything I'm doing at the minute is comic book based. Um, I'm painting some stuff from Atomic Mass Games that I've started doing some some Marvel bits. So I think that's getting me ready to 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 tackle the, the night model stuff. And I think what what it's taught me as well is, as you said, Jamie, is to remember um, remember the enjoyment, remember why you're doing it, mm. and with that joy will, will naturally come an affinity whereby you're spending more time without noticing, yeah. and you'll progress. So yeah, I think I think maybe I'll crack one out of the box and start it soon. I think that it's a metal. Uh, usually they are metal yeah. figures, so you can unpaint them pretty yeah. easily with any. Blimey. Yeah, yeah, they're all metal. Yeah, that is mental, mental, mental. Yeah, they are um, annoying to work with, mm. but the the, the weight. It's something that I yeah. I like a lot. I like, but aren't you scared crapless of chipping it? Um, well, not that much. Uh, Colossus mm. was in five mm, moving home movings, and mm. he didn't suffer too much. I think. Well, yeah, once, but uh, I, I don't mind. I don't have many yeah. respect of my figures. I always. <laughs> They always fell <laughs> on the floor, and yeah, yeah I'm not, I don't mind to repair. If I did yeah. it once, I can do it twice. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Um, no, it's true. <laughs> I think. Um, ah, okay, no, I, I had it, but it's a rubbish thing, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I think what we'll do then is we'll end that episode and we'll move on to a future episode or the next episode where we look at another one of Arnold's pieces. Uh, Once again, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy this content. Leave a comment down below. We do like to read them. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later. Cheers, guys.